Hi, my name is Morris van Straten from Visual Impact South Africa. Today, we are on the lucky position that we have the F5 and the F55 Sony cameras with us. These are brand new and we are extremely excited to have them in our stable. When you look at the cameras, they look very similar. The only way to distinguish that you're working with an F55 is this very um, silver looking um, lock-off for the um, lens mount. On the F5, it is a black mount like this. Um, the camera comes with an FZ mount and then one can obviously put an adapter on to go to PL. Okay, the FZ mount is the amount that you have on the, on the F3. Okay. What are the differences and the similarities between the F55? Well, first of all, both cameras can shoot XDCAM HD422 at 50 megabits per second on internal S by S cards. Okay, so both of these babies can shoot that same codec. The real change comes with the other codecs that are available to these cameras. Keep in mind that both of these cameras can be connected to the R5 external recorder. This is the R5 external recorder. And I have to say, coming from a film background, it is fantastic working with such a modular camera where everything fits and everything works. It's really, Sony put a lot of thought into the design of um, this camera. Cool. So when you look at these cameras, it feels like the F55 weighs a little bit more, but I think it's just psychological. They're pretty much exactly the same. At the moment, both of them have the new OLED viewfinder on, which is a massive improvement on previous viewfinder. And I think this camera is really going to be a game changer in the market. So let's look at the codecs that these two cameras can represent and record to. Both of these cameras can record XDCAM 4 to 2, um, 50 megabits per second um, codec. And then what differentiates them? Basically, the F5 can do 60 frames per second in the XAVC HD codec on the onboard S by S cards, and then it can do 120 frames per second in 2K mode. The F55, on the other hand, can do in the XAVC 2K 180 frames per second, and in 4K it can do 60 frames per second. Now things of course get quite interesting when you start going to the R5 external recorder. You can put the R5 recorder both on the F5 camera as well as on the F55 camera. And this recorder allows different options on the two different cameras. Um, in short, um, the R5 recorder will allow 120 frames per second in 2K RAW on the F5, whereas it will allow 240 frames per second in 2K RAW on the F55 and in 4K RAW with the recorder, it will allow 60 frames per second. Okay. Now, the F5 is in its um, broken down form to camera body only, a really, really compact camera. Basically, it's got this power adapter that slots onto the back, and you'll notice it's got a little lever here that locks it in. It's really a nice system, positive lock, and it's got a little release here that you basically press in in order to release it. What the external adapter allows you to do is to put 12 volt uh, through a cable in here or through a V-lock battery um, at the back here. Um, quite a nice system that locks in like, like this and it's quite solid. And there you go, presto, there's the camera. It can record to two internal S by S cards in these slots here. I like the fact that the door folds back so it's out of the way and can't be uh, damaged. It's got two 12 volt uh, 1.8 amp outs, which is really nice, more like a, a, a filmic design. And then the display is really, really simple on the side. It reminds a, one a lot of the um, Alexa camera. It's got two ND filters, 0.9 and 1.8. In other words, you can close down three f-stops with the ND filter on the 0.9, or you can close down six f-stops on the 1.8 on the ND filter um, over here. It's got a fantastic top handle that can easily be removed. And what I love, of course, is that on the top here of the top handle, it's got quarter width widths as well as three over eight inch uh, threads as well. So you can put anything on here. It's really a nice handle that lends itself to be rigged in, in, in various places. It also has a little mark here for the focal plane. The focal plane is uh, clearly indicated on the camera, which is always fantastic. And then on the right hand side of the camera, there's a connector here. And this connector is the digital connector for the uh, viewfinder that will plug into this little plug um, over here. The camera is really, really cleverly designed. Um, one thing that I noticed up first thing is that the audio console, okay, the XLR connectors, fits here on the, on the right hand side of the camera and it is actually removable. You can take the audio console off as well as the external out connectors here. Now you might ask yourself why and the answer is 3D. 
In 3D, it's really, really important to get the cameras close to each other. So Sony have thought ahead and they realized that if they take these connectors and make them modular and you can take them off, they can get the cameras closer to each other. So in general, a really well designed and well thought out. If you look at the underside of the camera, it will make any grip really, really proud. You've got um, one, two, three, three over eight inch uh, threads in there, and you've got one, two, three quarter width widths in there. So you can attach this camera to any base plate solidly without having any slippage or any problems in um, that arena. Okay, so in its really basic form, the F5 is a really modular camera. It does come with a shoulder brace, we don't have one here today, and it fits very, very easily onto the operator's shoulder. So it's really a really nice camera to work with and quite modular. We're now going to look at the F55, put it together and discuss some of its features. Very similar to the F5, basic body structure over here. And of course, here's the beauty of the external recorder. It's the first world ever external recorder that integrates completely with the body without any cables. It literally just clips onto the back like this with exactly the same mechanism as the uh, power um, plate that I used previously to get the 12 volt on there. Um, this is the AXSM slot. So in there, you'd effectively put um, these cards, the AXSM cards. You'll see this card has got a number on it, S24. That stands for 2.4 gigabytes per second. That refers to the transfer rate. So it does an extremely, extremely high transfer rate. It's got an interface over here, a nice arrow to indicate how it goes in, and it slides into this console like this and the lid closes. Okay. Basically, you'll then power the system through this 12 volt battery over here. You can put a cable in here, it's a four pin connector, or through the V-lock that goes onto the back of the camera um, over here. And now we're effectively ready to rock and roll. We can do simultaneous recording. We can do recording onto the external recorder as well as onto the S by S cards that go into these slots. These slots will facilitate the standard S by S Sony cards as well as the new S by S Pro Plus cards that obviously can transfer data at a higher uh, bit rate. So you could effectively do synchro recording or simultaneous recording and do your uh, proxy recording onto the cards and do your online recording onto the uh, recorder that is attached to the um, F55. Great, just a couple of words on Sony's new batteries. The model number is a BPFL75. It's part of the new olivine uh, technology, crystallized technology. Effectively, if you charge this battery on the new charger, it will charge in half the amount of time that it will charge on a standard Sony V-Log charger. So you can still charge these batteries on a standard Sony V-Log charger, but when you charge them on um, this charger over here, which is called a BCL90, it will charge in half the time. And the battery has double the capacity of the old uh, batteries, a much more efficient system to power your camera. And the cool thing is, this battery will effectively, on the back of this, power everything. It will power the external recorder, it will also power the camera, and you'll be able to access your um, 1.8 amp outputs here. These are basically uh, 12 volt outs for accessories that you can drive. So follow focuses, zoom controls, etc. You'll be able to drive from here and transmitters. So overall, a really good ergonomical shape. Nice to work with, um, with the option to take the external outputs off. So the external outputs are the normal suspects. There's time code, there's gen lock, there's test out, there's even a shutter pulse that comes out as well. And then you've got four HD SDIs. Obviously four to facilitate 4K. You can have a cable per each three if you want to output 4K for uh, monitoring or recording purposes. It even has an HDMI out, which is quite useful if only HDMI cables would be reliable, which we all know they're really, really hard in the field to work with as they, they break very, very often. And then it's got your standard Sony remote uh, connector over here. So generally, the, full, the camera really has a good form factor and the ergonomics are really, really impressive. Guys, just to show you a little bit about the F55 and how easily it is to um, operate. If you look at the side of the camera here, it's got the classic um, Sony scroll and click uh, button to select your um, different options. In this case, let's say I want to change the shutter, for example. The shutter is over here. I press the menu. It highlights the um, shutter and the white balance or the color temperature. I press the shutter and I simply go to steps and I can choose 1 over 60, 1 over 20. Um, a number of shutters are available to me here. And the highest shutter setting there is 1 over 2000. So I'll go back to 1 over 50. I click it in and the shutter is selected. 
If I want to change the color temp, I go down there. I can go to a preset of 4.3, a preset of 5.5, or I can go into my memory if I've got one that's selected there already. But let's keep it at 3.2. So I just click that in. And if I don't want uh, that to be accessible or to be able to change, I press menu again. It fades out. It's no longer optional. Now it's optional. I can actually change it. Now it's not optional. The menu layout and the camera layout on the side is really, really simple. You've got your um, uh, mini jack here for monitoring audio. Underneath here, you've got your standard USB uh, connector. You've got your mini USB. You've got your SD cards here for menu setups. If you want to establish some looks, for example, into, the, uh, into different cameras, you'd match looks by plugging here into the SD cards. As we said before, here's your S by S slots um, on this side. Here's the on and off um, of the camera. And effectively, here are your menus. You've got your camera menu, your file menu, your um, time code menu, and your viewing menu, okay? And it really navigates easily, down, up, left, right. If you press view twice, then you get these options coming up with the, with the different um, arrows. Here, you've got three assignable buttons on this side, one, two, three. And then on this side over here, you've got your fourth assignable uh, button. And to these assignable buttons, you can allocate a number of functions. We don't have time to go through it today, but the camera's design in general is really, really good. It's got a very big record uh, button here, and you can also assign to the other four buttons recording functions if you want to activate the camera from the right side or the dumb side, as we call it. So that's really, really useful. What else? Um, this is an OLED uh, viewfinder. Its resolution, I think, is 1280 by 720. It is fantastic. The contrast, the detail is unbelievable. I think this is going to be very, very popular with cameramen compared to some of the poorer viewfinders that have been available previously from Sony. That was me, Marius von Straten, from Visual Impact South Africa on the F55 and the F5. We basically just touched the surface on those two cameras and we'll be giving you more information as we get to know the kit better. The good news is my colleague Stefan is going to be shooting some tests on these cameras. He's going to compare the global shutter with the rolling shutter of the F55 and the F5, as well as some dynamic range tests on the cameras. So these videos will be available to you. Please be aware, both of these cameras are available in rentals and sales from Visual Impact South Africa in both Joburg and Cape Town. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you.